Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be talking about some controversial or forbidden art advice that I have found really helpful and maybe you'll find helpful too. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, something that I came up upon a lot when I was first starting to post my art online. Um, when I was first learning how to draw and really getting interested in drawing, I pretty much only had uh, an interest in drawing male characters. Um, I don't know why, uh, it's just like the type of thing that I was really interested in and I would get comments on DeviantArt of people being like, why don't you draw girls? Um, conversely, when I started drawing on YouTube, by that point I was in a phase where I really liked drawing girls and like pretty much only was drawing girls and I would get tons of comments that are like, why don't you draw more guys or why don't you draw more muscular body types or, you know, it, it, it varied a lot but it was like the moment that I started specializing in something or like I really got interested in one specific type of subject, it seems like there was a lot of pushback and it was sort of like this understood idea that like the only right way to be an artist is if you're sort of drawing everything like you should be drawing environments you should be you know if you're drawing too many like close-up uh, portraits of your characters like you need to be doing more you need to be changing the angle and while I think that that's really good advice if you're going into the industry and you're trying to learn how to be like a yeah like an industry artist or someone who does animation or something like that obviously you're going to have to be able to draw a ton of different things but I think that the average internet artist would actually benefit from specializing a little bit in particular because I think the audiences really like to know what they're getting when they follow like an Instagram or um, somebody on social media they like to see similar patterns of art um, so I actually think that it's a little detrimental to constantly be pushing people away from what they're naturally gravitating towards especially because like I described for myself I had a phase where I liked to only draw guys and then I had a phase where I liked to mostly draw girls and like I had a phase where I was really stuck on this certain types of body types like I used to only draw really skinny characters and then I got kind of interested in this like flowy pear-shaped more like plump female characters just by the nature of me sophisticating as an artist and learning more, I naturally started wanting to be able to draw more different types of things and more different types of people. And I think and I hope for other artists that they have the same kind of experience. I think the wonderful thing about art is that every artist has their own perspective and they have their own things that they really love. When you look at the old masters, there were a lot of painters and sculptors who really only focused on one type of subject for long periods of their career. I mean, some artists barely did anything more than portrait painting. Some artists pretty much just did flowers and environments and I think that that's perfectly fine so yeah I would say focus on drawing which you're naturally loving right now and then if you feel like things are getting stale or you're getting tired of what you've been doing then it might be time to branch out a little bit but don't be too down on yourself if you like mainly drawing one type of thing um, if it's cars that's great you'll become incredibly good at cars while you're fixated on them just follow your heart and do what you love and eventually you will get to all of these different wonderful things that you can learn how to draw. Your art practice is your own and if, especially if you're not trying to make it your job actively and if it's something that you just do to calm down or as sort of like a therapeutic thing for yourself, I think it's best not to take too much advice from strangers and through comments. The next tip that I want to talk about that's a little controversial is using copy and paste a lot. Um, this is specifically a digital art tip, but it can even apply to traditional in some sense. Um, and that's the idea that whenever you have like a busy, detailed scene, or if you're doing like a comic in particular, where you're drawing something over and over again, like trees or grass, I think that it's really a good idea to copy and paste and try to minimize that sort of detail work as much as you can, um, not only for your mental health but also for your physical health um, because doing a lot of excess drawing that you don't need to be can in the long run uh, make your projects take longer and hurt your wrist. Um, so what I like to do a lot of the time is have like three or four different variations of the thing that I'm going to have to draw a lot of. Let's say trees for example so they'll be at different heights with different root structures and slightly different like bark whorls and stuff. Um, and then if you're just clever about placement and like flipping them and slightly tweaking them and transforming them you can create an entire forest out of just three or four different variations of trees and it's not going to look 
bad. Um, it's not going to look copy pasty. It's just going to help you um, make these illustrations and these environments quickly so that you can move on to other things that do really need your bespoke attention. I think that something that is kind of glorified in the art world but is actually a bad thing is like overwork and doing making everything as hard as possible essentially. Um, now obviously if you have some reason that you need to be drawing each tree individually uh, for your particular project then absolutely go for it. But if this is just one panel on one page of a comic that's going to last for hundreds of pages, I think that really focusing on how to be as gentle to yourself in that process is really critical and it can help you um, in so many ways. Uh, avoiding burnout uh, is also like a huge deal and I think that this kind of monotonous work can really start to wear on people um, so yeah just try try experimenting with more copy and pasting see if you can even repeat environments um, for example in your comics uh, obviously if it's if it's looking too boring or if it's not looking right then scrap it and just do it by hand but I really think that it's a good idea to to try to reduce your workload wherever you can and this is one of the things that has helped me the most the next tip I want to talk about is basically what I like to call like quitting strategies um, or ways that you can just like stop when you're in a cycle or a loop of trying to fix a piece of art. So there's a few different things you can do. Obviously when you're really frustrated with an illustration, it's just not coming together and you're hating it. The first thing you can do is just like quit just like stop um, either for the day or completely you can completely restart and I think especially when you're new to drawing um, or illustration it is very tempting to not let go of something that you're working on especially if you're just gonna need to do it again like if it's for an assignment or for something professional of course um, you're going to have to do it again but if you're really hating what you're working on sometimes I find that it's actually a lot easier to just let it go the other thing that you can do and I love doing this is if there's one part of your art that you're not liking it's just frustrating you to death um, it you've tried to redraw it over and over let's say like a particular hand or maybe their shoes something like that literally just crop it out um i know this is kind of a barbaric uh solution to this problem but i'm telling you there's nothing more satisfying than after struggling with something for a long time just literally like chopping it off and it's like it was never there um sometimes i can even find that cropping your art in after you've already decided a composition and worked on it for a while can actually help like refresh your eyes and you can sometimes even get a better composition than you originally had planned. Um, for me personally, I find that my initial compositions sometimes aren't that great, especially once like I execute the art inside of them, it looks different than how I pictured. So if you're able to go back in and change the canvas shape or size and change the position of your character and cut things out, sometimes you can actually come up with art that works even better. Uh, so I highly recommend trying that out. Uh, in general, I just think that there's a tendency for a lot of artists to stick with something that they're not enjoying and that they're really frustrated by. but gripping on to something that's not working can actually make you burn out faster, not want to draw the next day, and those are the types of things that you really want to avoid. Um, I think there's a masochistic bent to a lot of artists and we feel like we have to finish things that aren't working, um, but one of the biggest things that I learned in art school that actually helped me the most and that I've taken with me all these years later is that sometimes you just need to know when to trash something or when to like let go of an idea like your original composition let go of the fact that this is going to be like a full body uh illustration or portrait um and see it from another perspective um just being generally kinder to yourself is something that i think a lot of artists could really benefit from and it's something that i'm constantly advocating for um i know it's really easy to be hard on yourself and especially if you're posting your art online a lot um, people can be really harsh um, and typically the thing that sticks out the most in your illustration is not the best part but it's the weakest point um, 
that's another thing that I heard my teachers say all the time, which is like the weakest link in, th in the chain is what your art is going to be judged by. It's going to be judged by the worst part of it. So if there's part of it that's looking just completely jank and messed up and ugly to you, then I, I think you should crop it out or cover it or do whatever you have to do um, in order to save the rest of your illustration if you can. So those were some of my dark and evil twisted art tips. Okay, it's it's not that serious, but let me know if any of these seem helpful to you or if you disagree, because I know that some of these are controversial. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next one. Huge thank you to my wonderful patrons, including Stan Soup, Liddy Savior, Roro, Birds on a Wire, Emmy Lightning, Rayon, Sporple Matt, Brandon Stark, CB, Lucy Amajiki, Liv Liv, Salty Jackrabbit, Raven's Crow, Sosala, Tea Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Gender Was Stolen, Kadaria, Astro Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Cutie Pie, Ruin Rain Crow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, Liv 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 Liv.